Open your Bible to Romans chapter 1, please. Romans chapter 1. I can't see y'all, but you can probably see me. That light seems to get brighter and brighter the older that I get. Of course, if you got floaters, it's a whole lot of fun. You got any floaters? Yeah, yeah. I've had them since college because playing intramural football. That's okay. I, I'm, I appreciate you being here tonight. I hope you're glad to be in our middle of the week service. And uh, like Daniel's already said, there'll be no services next Wednesday night. So tonight I want to talk about being thankful. And you know, I believe that Thanksgiving and being thankful ought to be every day for the child of God. And I've got several verses of scripture I'm going to be reading to you tonight. And uh, so I want you to stand with me and honor the word of God. Romans chapter 1 and verse 21. Although they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God, nor were they thankful. But they became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, I pray tonight that I will not take anything for granted. Lord, I just pray that everything that you have given to me and to us, we will be so grateful for it. Just the little bitty things that we do take for granted, Lord. Uh, God, there's so many people tonight in the hospital, uh, very critical, uh, Lord, that can't do any of the things that we can do. Some are in homes, Lord, where they're just there. And people are helping to take care of them. And I pray, God, you'll be with them. Father, I thank you for the place called heaven. Because one of these days, we as children of God will be there. And, and Lord, it'll be, it'll be perfect. It'll be wonderful and joyful. And we'll be praising you and, and loving on one another. There'll be no jealousy there. There'll be no gossip. Nobody talking about anybody else. And Father, we'll just be thankful for the blood of Jesus, your Son who died on the cross for us. And Father, I pray tonight, even in our church service or maybe somebody that might be listening, if they do not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, I pray, God, they will invite you to come into their life and simply save them. Lord, I pray that, I pray, God, you'll do whatever it takes to make me a soul winner. And for all of us, Lord, to go out of the building tonight and never let a day pass without telling somebody about Jesus. Because when it's all over and done with, Lord, that's really all that's going to matter. So God, thank you for letting us come together tonight. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, and they did not even give thanks. In a Revelation passage, you find those multitudes of the redeemed they're gathering together, and the thing they love to say is this, glory and praise and honor and majesty unto him. Have you ever met an individual who is not thankful? They're thankless. Thanklessness is a fruit of a carnal, selfish life. You can be around people, and not very long after that, you're going to find out something about them. And you will find out if they're really a person who means what they say. Are they trying to put on a show? Do they really appreciate what they have in life? Or they don't really appreciate it at all, and they take it for granted. Thankfulness is the fruit of a regenerated heart, of a born-again heart, of a saved heart. Somebody who has been to the cross. Now, I believe this, that we who are born again, sometimes don't you feel like crawling out of the auditorium on your hands and knees and just thanking God that because of His blood, we get to go to heaven when we die. And also, we get to enjoy the ride along the way, and we need to be thankful for every single little bitty thing that God has given to us. We could probably take out a piece of paper and a pen and write down a whole lot of things that we as individuals take for granted. 
every single day of our life. Friend, just getting out of bed and letting your feet hit on the floor, that is a blessing from God that we need to be thankful for. And we could go on and on and on. See, gratitude and being thankful, I believe, is the thermometer of your spiritual life. And to be grateful is to realize what God has done and what God is about in your life. I think about God coming into my life, and I know that's a miracle. And to understand that He has given me the power to be thankful for that power that will overcome Satan gets me all excited sometimes. Because in my flesh, I'm going to get knocked down every single time. But God the Father, y'all, gives you the power of the Holy Spirit inside of you. And because of that, anything and everything that we do in our life can be a victorious time because God has already given us the victory. Amen? The Bible tells us that we are to be humbly grateful. I heard a pastor say, many, though, are grumbly hateful. God has been very good to us, hasn't he? He has been so bountiful to us. A lot of us will get together with our families next Thursday and week from tomorrow, and we'll have more food than we'll know what to do with. People will be pushing off things for you to carry home with them. Or if you're the host, you'll be pushing, pushing things on everybody else so you won't have to eat it later. But God has been so good to me and to you, and He's been so bountiful to us. Tonight, I want us to think about three things when we think about being thankful, being grateful, and Thanksgiving season at this time. And first of all, it's simply this. Christians, be thankful. Nobody should ever have to tell us that, should they? Eddie, you need to be thankful every single day. Nobody comes by me every day and say, are you thankful for what God has done to you? Or for you, nobody should have to do that. And you know, really, we don't have a choice when we become a child of God to be thankful. The Bible says it is a command to us. It is a responsibility to you and me. As a Christian, it is the duty of every believer to be thankful. And you know what I found out a long time ago? That people, people are grouchy enough like it is. Aren't they? They have a lot of bad things in their life and I mean, some people get the five-day mads, and they stay mad for five days. They need to see some believers that come to church and live it that are thankful in the good times, the bad times, on the mountaintop, y'all, and also in the valley. And we all have that, don't we? Listen to a few verses in the Bible. In Psalms 50, the Bible says, Give thanks to God, pay your vows to the Most High. In the book of 1 Thessalonians, it says, In everything give thanks. Did it say everything? For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. You mean that bad thing that happened to me? Listen, everything that happens in our life, listen, God the Father will take it, turn it around, and use it for His glory if we thank Him for it. Ephesians 5, it says, Giving thanks always. For all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, whenever you look in the Bible, it seems that there is one continual, constant command. That is, that you give thanks, that you are grateful for what you do have, and that you give praise to the Lord. I mean, listen, if, if Southern Baptists can ever learn how to praise the Lord... A new day will dawn in our church services. Always rejoicing in the Lord. The Bible says, and notice a solemn warning, God says, if you're not grateful, you're just like the drunkard, you are out of the will of God. You're just like the man who never comes to church, you're out of the will of God. Now, if somebody does not come to church and they're a born-again believer, I want to tell you, according to the Word of God, they're out of the will of God. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God. And a person who is not thankful and not grateful is out of the will of God. Now, the Bible gives us examples of people that we can learn from tonight. The Apostle Paul was a man who had a whole lot to complain about. I mean, if there's any man that who, had, who had a reason to complain about being in jail, about being beaten... 
about being wrinkled up by the water and on and on we could go, it would be the Apostle Paul. But he had an overflowing sense of praise and joy in his life. And we all know Job, and I don't, listen, preacher, is that a real story? Hey, listen, that's the Word of God. He lost his house and his family. I mean, you could have shot me right then. Uh, lost his cattle and boils broke out over his body. And Job said, blessed be the name of the Lord. In the middle of his loss, in his tragedy, in the midst of the crisis of his life, Job could say, blessed be the name of the Lord. And the Apostle Paul has a great word for us. He said in 2 Corinthians 9, Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Now what was he saying? You know, there's a lot of things tonight that we can be thankful for. But the thing that we ought to be most thankful for is that gift that we cannot even really pronounce. The gift that we cannot even speak. Oh, wow. It is too priceless. It is too precious. And I'm talking about the free gift, the free gift of salvation. You know where all of us deserve to go? We died hell. Simply to hell. That's the way it is. But God the Father sent His only Son, Jesus, that we might be, listen, we might be born again. I like that word, born again. Just like it talks about with Nicodemus. In John chapter 3, I believe it'd be better off for a man to be in the darkest place in the entire world without one penny to his name and have Jesus in his life than to be a person walking down uh, Wall Street with a million dollars in their pocket and on their way to hell. Paul says that unspeakable, unspeakable gift is something for which we ought to be able to thank God. We want to thank Him not just when things are going good, but the Bible says in everything, you know, it's real easy when things are going good for us, isn't it? I mean, we say, ain't God good? In proper English, but we like to say that, ain't God good in our life? Paul says in everything. Now, in the book of Colossians, chapter 1 and verse 3, I want to read this to you. It says, we give thanks to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. You know, this time of the year, I know they're showing a lot of different things on some of the channels on television about Thanksgiving and Christmas. And sometimes I get tickled when I'm watching maybe a ball game or whatever, the commercials in between. But I want to read something here to you. In chapter 3 of Colossians, and verse number 15. You know, the commercials, I didn't finish what I was saying. They talk about being thankful, but they never talk about who to be thankful to. Because, see, it's God who we are to be thankful to. In chapter 3, and verse 15, the Bible says, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also... You were called in one body and be thankful. And then verse 17 in the same chapter. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. You know, you get the idea here that Paul knows a lot about praise. Uh, it ought to be a constant life of joy, and he had that in the good times and the bad. It ought to be a constant life of gratitude Jesus showed us an example that we ought to do it. In John 6, 11, Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed it to the disciples, the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fish as much as they would. Acts 27 says, And when he had thus spoken, he took bread, gave thanks to God in the presence of them all, and when he had broken it, he began to eat. You know, occasionally somebody will talk to me and they'll say, you know, preacher, I don't really want to say the blessing when I go out because I'm a little bit embarrassed. And if we do anything, we just bow our heads, count to ten, and we start eating. Well, uh, I think that we shouldn't touch any food until we thank God for it. Some will go out to a restaurant and say they don't want to be very holy. They don't want people to think they're holy. Well, 
If you go out any time to eat, I think that there ought to be a time where you can say, Lord, I thank you for the food that we're about to eat. And you know what? We don't say this, but Lord, thank you. I can take that food in my mouth and I can swallow down my throat and it goes and does what it's supposed to do. Somebody near you might see what you are doing and you know, you never know when it might touch their life. Have you ever had anybody to come over to your table after you got through praying and you started eating and they came to your table and asked you if you would specifically pray for them and what they were going through? See, God, y'all can do anything and everything. Second Chronicles 31.2 Ministers of Thanksgiving Well, I've never met a minister of Thanksgiving but it says, And Hezekiah appointed the courses of the priests and the Levites after their courses, every man according to his service. The priests and the Levites for burnt offerings and for peace offerings to minister and give thanks and to praise in the gates of the tents of the Lord. You know, in those days, they chose priests. His main responsibility was to give thanksgiving and praise. But the Bible says today we as Christians are priest, and one thing that a priest is to do is to give thanks unto God and to praise Him. Remember what the psalmist said in Psalms 100? We are to enter His gates with thanksgiving, into His courts with praise, and we are to be thankful and bless His name. Let me turn over to the book of Psalms here just for a moment. Chapter 92 and verse 1. Psalms 92, let me get there. Psalms 92, verses 1 and 2. The Bible says, It is good to give thanks to the Lord, sing praises to your name, O, my, o Most High, to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night. Uh, you know what? We better thank God. We better, as Christians, thank our Heavenly Father. I know maybe the job you're doing right now, where you're working, making a living, sometimes it might be difficult, but you need to be thankful you've got a job. The family sometimes causes us trouble, and we know that, but a lot of people would give anything if they had a family. There's a lot of couples who wish they would have children, could have children. And the energy that God has given to us, you know, there are, God has given to us muscles. The older you get, the less muscle mass you have. That's why you need to exercise your muscles. That's why if you don't do right, you may not even be able to walk to the mailbox and back. But you know what? Every time we pick something up, that's a thankfulness to God that he's given us the strength to pick it up. Have you ever seen anybody who can't even bend over and grab something from the floor and pick it up? Those are the muscles in your back, and we need to thank God if we can do that. The eyes that we have, oh my goodness, and the ears that we have to hear with. I mean, a lot of us in this room tonight can't hear hardly anything. Including me, but listen, we're thankful for what we can hear. Yeah. I think we ought to be thankful we can get tired and we can get worn out. I think about Gus. We pray for him and, oh, me, y'all. I think about all the children in St. Jude and April worked there for some years and she would tell us things about what was going on and now she works at a NICU unit where the little baby's coming in and they, they weigh just little or nothing. And, and she tells us how, how critical some of those babies are and some of them will not make it. God just simply wants us to say thank you. Paul said, but thanks be to God for the victory we have in Jesus Christ our Lord. Well, secondly, there's a few motives for being thankful. I want to give them to you very quickly. The first motive is it brings glory to God. And that's why we're here tonight. Brings glory to His name to praise Him. The psalmist said in 119, At midnight I awakened and I thanked the Lord. Have you ever done that? 
I mean, have you been so happy in the Lord Jesus that you woke up in the middle of the night and you had to get up and say, Lord, thank you for what you've done in my life on this day. I'm thankful. The Bible says, for these blessings we ought to be thankful. Matthew Henry, I have a set of his commentaries, and you may have heard this before. One time he was robbed. He was robbed, really robbed, and he got home. And he thanked God for being robbed. He said, God, I want to thank you for four things about me being robbed today. And number one is this. I want to thank you that I've never been robbed before. Number two, I want to thank you that all he took was my money. He did not take my life. Number three, I want to thank you. I've never had much money for anybody to steal. And then fourthly, God, I want to thank you that I was the one that was robbed and I was not the robber. Mm. You know, another motive is just looking at the blessings of God. I believe if you'll go home tonight and thank God for your mate, if you've got a mate, listen, I'd give anything to go home and thank God for mine. That's why I try to tell people now, enjoy every single day. You love that wife or that husband, or I'm going to pray that God will wear you out. And just don't do it on special occasions. Do it all the time. But if we were to go home tonight and make a list of all the things that God has done for us, um, I think we would find ourselves richer and happier and healthier and more blessed than we could have ever thought of or imagined. You may not like your husband. Hmm. <laughs> well, maybe he was the best you could do. <laughs> One man said, every time I meet other men's wives, I'm grateful they're other men's wives. <laughs> We've got more blessings than we could ever imagine, don't we? Another motive is the goodness of God. You know, God is a good God. I love this. Now, I hope you understand to be thankful only when a lot of things are going well for you or pleasurable for you or when you've got plenty of food to eat and plenty of money in the bank. I'm telling you, we ought to be thankful simply because God is good, period. And sometimes that gets very, very hard. I heard the story one time of a hospital. In a hospital, the pastor was there, and the baby was, the baby was not doing very well, and the, they had run some tests and everything, and all of a sudden the baby changed for the goodness, and the pastor was in the room, and the doctor came in, and and everybody began to smile. And they said, Dr. Totem said, I believe your baby's going to be fine. Your baby's going to be all right. And the mother of the baby just gave the pastor a big old hug and said, ain't God good? Isn't God good? They went out in the hallway and then down the hall there, there was another family. And there was a little child in that room and the little baby had just died. Died of a, a terrible cancer. Now I want to ask you, is God just good to that family that got good news? Or is God good to everybody? I mean, you know, in our little minds that we have, sometimes we don't understand that God is simply good. We may not like it, and a lot of times we don't, if we'll be honest. But God is still good. I got a call from my daughter April a while ago and my youngest daughter's oldest daughter fell off the couch and they've taken her to La Bonder. She's got bleeding on her face and a big knot on her head and and you know I know we all as children are going to have hurts like that and stuff and uh, I mean I don't want anything to happen. You know let it happen to me. Don't let it happen to my grandchildren. And uh, but you know God God is simply and by the way if she was bad I wouldn't be here. Candace would have to speak. But listen, God is good, simply good all the time. When somebody, you're in a room, in a hospital room, or you're at a home, and, and I've been in plenty of homes where the person is 
they're wanting to die there at home, and I've seen them breathe their last breath. And I want you to know, my friend, that's so very hard. It's hard to be somebody who is a pastor, and your heart goes out to them, and you can only do so much. And, but I want to tell you, when we leave that room, it's so hard to say God is good, is it not? God has a portrait. Is that how you say it? Portrait of your life. And I believe he's painting it. He's painting it, y'all. It's a big canvas and he's painting it. And, and one day he'll finish and it'll be a beautiful picture. We may not understand everything on the picture there. But I guarantee you one day, one day, one day we will understand because God is good. God knows exactly where you are right now. He knows when you're born. He knows when you're going to... Isn't that amazing? We have a God who knows when you're going to die. Isn't that something? I mean, He knows everything about us. And all He says is, I want you all to be thankful that I have created you and I've allowed you to live during this time in history. Well, there's some results, and I won't give it very quickly to you. Second Chronicles chapter 5 in verses 13 and 14, let me read that. Indeed, it came to pass when the trumpet, trumpeters and singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, For He is good, for His mercy endures forever. That the house, the house of the Lord, was filled with a cloud. So that the priest could not continue ministering because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. Oh, folks, that is so very good. It filled the house of God. Now, to the men here, if uh, let's say you came home from work. You got home, and if you got a son, that's fine. If you got a daughter, that's fine. You looked over in the corner. And there was your child, and she looked real, or he looked real nervous. And you go over to your child, and you say, Huh, what's wrong? Or you say to your son, what's wrong? And Well, Daddy, I'm, I'm really worried while I'm sitting here. Uh, I'm really worried. Am I going to have enough? Are we going to have enough food to eat tonight? Yes, son. Yeah, daughter, we're going to have enough food to eat. If we don't, I'll go get us some. Well, am I going to have enough clothes to wear to school? And one thing after another comes out of her mouth. And Daddy, is somebody going to come and take my bicycle away from me? And you know, about that time, you really started feeling terrible for your child. Can you imagine tonight how God may feel when we as Christians... Should be thanking him, but we're worrying and fretting about every little thing. You know, God, what am I going to do? I know that you died on the cross for me and you came out of that grave three days later. But Lord, I'm having a hard time right now. What am I going to do? If we, as I'm talking about all of us, if we could just simply thank God and Accept the fact that whatever I have is going to be enough. And whatever somebody gives somebody else is going to be sufficient. One of the results of praising God is that we ourselves are comforted. And God is praised. And you know what happens then? His presence is all over us and in the place that we're in. And it's all done for God's glory. Very, very simple message about being thankful. I'll come together and see some of my cousins next Thursday. I ain't seen in no telling when. You may see some people in your family you ain't seen in a good while. Some of them want to come up and hug you and all that junk. I almost said something else. Nothing ugly, but I'm just saying. We're thankful for, most of all, our salvation. We are thankful for our family. And we're thankful for our church family. 
So I heard a preacher say a long, long time ago that every day is Thanksgiving, Christmas, and Easter all wrapped into one. And I've loved that and remembered that for a long, long time. And that's so true. Tonight, if you need to make a decision for Christ, we want you to do that. If you want to come and just say, Brother Eddie, I have not been thankful. And starting tonight, I'm going to be thankful in the good times and also the bad times. Because I know God's in charge of my life. Will you stand with me very reverently and let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. And I thank you, Lord, that we can be thankful. And it's over and over again in the Word of God that we ought to be thankful. Father, we know how powerful you are. And we know what it means when your presence is here. And Father, I pray for Hickory with Baptist Church. Lord, that people will know when they come and visit our church that that's a group of people right there that means what they sing and means what they study and means what they hear. And, and Lord, they're thankful to be a part of this fellowship. Lord, just bless us tonight. And God, please, please bless the good old USA. God, we need your help in this country. And it's in your precious name we pray. Amen.